Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Jesus Name Ministries. Uh, I just wanted to come on here again today to uh, wish y'all a wonderful day and uh, just let you know that uh, you are loved. You are loved by Jesus and by those who love Jesus. And uh, so anyhow, um, I have uh, some special stuff this morning for you, uh, those who uh, are taking the uh, opportunity to listen and share this uh, time with uh, what I have on my heart and my mind, and uh, just let you know that Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus loves you. And uh, if I could today, I want to talk about, uh, if I were to give this a title, I would say that uh, the perfect law of liberty the perfect law of liberty. And many of you know that, that that is actually a scripture in the Bible. And uh, so with that, I just kind of wanted to let you know that liberty in itself is simple. And, and, and it basically means to act as you would please. No restrictions. If someone tells you to, hey, you know, if you'd like to speak a few moments, just take your liberty. Uh, they have just given you wide open uh, space to talk about anything and all things that you might want to speak about with no restrictions. And uh, one of the great things about uh, being in America, being in these United States of America, is that one of the greatest things is liberty. And when we talk about liberty, we're talking about freedom. Freedom that we can say and do pretty much as we will. Now, we do have laws of the land. Thank God we do have some laws of the land. Uh, I would say that this place would be no better than any of the other third world countries that have dictators and, and gangs and uh, other bad, evil sources that run their world over there. But... Uh, Anyhow, today I wanted to talk about that perfect law of liberty. And you say a law, um, law in itself, it almost seems counter, uh, well, it almost seems like a, a law versus liberty is a restriction versus freedom. And, uh, and, and this, this was, uh, I believe, came from the writings of... Uh, Paul, where he had talked about, I'm free to do what I will, but I constrain myself. Um, now, constraining yourself um, is the law part. Um, not doing certain things that would please someone else is your constraining uh, in your will to not do those things, to please someone else. And uh, that's what this is all about this morning. That is the liberty that Jesus gives us. And if you know John 14 and uh, 15, he says, If you keep love me, keep my commandments. What does he mean by that? If your love for me is as it should be, remember the greatest of commandments. We talked about it uh, last video or video before that where the lawyer had talked to Jesus, and, and Jesus said, well, what do you think? He said, well, it's to love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength, and to uh, love your neighbors yourself. And Jesus said, by these two hang all the law and the prophets. So the law hangs off of that. So if you're going to please God, then you're going to love him more than life itself, and those things that please God are going to be your pleasure. The things that please God are going to be the things that you want to do. That is your um, way of showing Him. And uh, many, many of you uh, usually, uh, I'll just say it this way: If you've ever fallen in love with a with a woman or a man, uh, even even had a crush on someone in your uh, elementary school days or whatever. Uh, at whatever time it had come, um, and maybe that's what you're going through now, you you do any and everything to please that person because you want them to know that they are the apple of your eye. 
They are your number one priority. And you are doing this to show them of your love for them and your care and concern for them and how special they are to you. And this is what we talk about today, perfect law of liberty. Only constraints that you have are the ones that you place on yourself. And that is exactly what Jesus came to do. He came to reject and rebuke, to change that old law, that law that was not working. And we know by scripture in the New Testament that it never worked. By, by, by witness of, of James and, and, and Peter, who said it in Acts 15, we nor our fathers could obey that law. We could not live up to that law. And that law was so constraining and burden laden on the shoulders of men by the priest who steeped in their own traditions, who had been piling on and on and on things that please the leadership, please the priest, that had nothing to do with what God had required. But they continually kept moving the goal, goal post further away so that it could not be obtained. And we talked about that last week about the churches today. They have moved the goalpost of serving Christ so far away that is, it is impossible to please God according to their standards. And this is all by design. They don't want you to please God. They want you to please them. And by pleasing them, you have to fail. If you fail, you've got to keep coming back to them for more advice, for more preaching, for more beating over the head scriptures to you to let you know that you're never going to be good enough. But they hold that carrot out for you to say that you can be, but you're just not there yet. And when they welcome you into their, their hierarchy, uh, to, to their, to their uh, high places, into their lofty groups, their special uh, uh, group that they have formed to, to be the a higher echelon, and then love to be set in high places and Matthew 23 that Jesus spoke of. They love to be seen of men. They love to be elevated. They love to be called rabbi, teacher, master. They love to be called pastor. They love to be called evangelist and, and, and teacher. They love to be called all these things because it is not of Jesus. Again, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He didn't say, if you love me, keep Paul's commandments. He didn't say, if you love me, keep Peter's commandments. He didn't say, if you love me, keep Jonah's commandments. He didn't say, if you love me, keep Moses' commandments. You see the paradigm shift here? You see that you either accept the New Testament and you come to Christ, or you're still under the law. There's no two things. Jesus said you cannot put new wine in old bottles. And if you go to Joel 2 and 38, you're going to find back there where it was prophesied that the new wine was going to come, a new spirit, and, and, and we were going to have a new way, and, and, and a new and living way. So when you look at that, the prophecy has come. And, and Jesus said, in, uh, stood up in the synagogues. Why was he in a synagogue? Because there were people there that needed to hear his word. Did he create the synagogue? No. If you want me to come to your church, I'll come and let you know that well, I'll give you the message today. I'll let you know how that you need to love Jesus and not this building. Love Jesus and not these pastors. Love Jesus and not the, the organization and what it can do for you. Because all of that, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. But their kingdom is. Their kingdom is numbers in their attendance. Their kingdom is offering numbers. How much can you give? How much can they divert? your money. How much can they take from you? Oh, God has blessed you. Oh, at least give him a tenth. 
and they 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 squalor about all these things and now they'll preach this down to your throat if you bless god you'll give to the church we'll do with that money we'll we'll make great works of jesus we'll we'll spread the gospel we'll do this and that but jesus never put any of that into play jesus did not and if you find it you let me know but you'll not find it you'll not find it in the pages of our general uh bible and uh so today we're talking about the perfect law of liberty not some law that some man and 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 group of men uh some some council some some people that have put together just to just to clobber you and keep you oppressed with these things oppression is what they are if jesus even look at the old testament god led Moses to lead the people out away from the Pharaoh. What was the Pharaoh doing? A big thing here. You can see that he was making them build their cities. They was they were slaves. And and the same God that wants you to have liberty today through Jesus Christ is that same God that put a man out there and moved all these people away out of the bondage that they were in. That is not what Jesus wants you to do. And when you look on Matthew 23, you will see how he says, whoa. And, and we talked about that last week, last time, about woe is not some greetings. It's not some favorable saying. Woe means pending doom is coming to you. Whoa, 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 he said in, in Revelation, the angel did. Just before that, the... the um, the pestilence and the and the bad things were to happen and and jesus told the scribes and the pharisees woe unto you hypocrites hypocrites now if you say that jesus was for him that doesn't sound like he's for him to me so these warnings dire warnings woe you hypocrites he said, you can pass land and sea to convert one proselyte and you make them a twofold child of hell more than you are yourself. And what he's really saying here is you're teaching them things that God never intended. You are piling on traditions of man and not that of God. And you are binding them. You are laying heavy burdens on them. And Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. I want you to have life and more abundantly. I want you to have liberty. I want you to serve me as you wish to serve me. That is the true worship and serving of God. How you would do it without constraints. That is what God wants. God wants your free and unfettered worship. He doesn't want you to show up to some church building and, and, and because you practice in a choir and you got everything just right and, and you, you dress just the perfect thing and, and you, you're out there in an entertainment fashion and you're, you're displaying all these things and you're putting on a show as in Hollywood and, and then you say, oh, now I can worship God. You need to go back to the story of the woman at the well. You got to find out the true worshipers God is looking for. Because they will worship him in spirit and in truth. They will not be up on some platform entertaining people to keep an audience and to keep attendance at a church house building. That is not what this gospel's about. But it is what religion's about. And if you're steeped in religion today, then you, my friend, are burdened. You do not have liberty. You do not have the perfect law of liberty because Jesus' law is to love him and to keep his commandments and to love your brother as yourself, your neighbor as yourself. That, in essence, is Jesus' law. Amen. That is the commandments of Jesus. And with that, all these other things will fall in line. You will accomplish pleasing Jesus with that. All right, so let's, let's move to, and again, Jesus, John 14, 15, said, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. And this is going to segue right into where we want to go here. He will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. Spirit of truth. Mark that down. These are words that should be highlighted if you have a physical Bible. If you have these words, you, you should write it on an index card and you should put it on your wall or your refrigerator. Amen. That he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. My kingdom is not of this world. Your mind is not going to be geared to this world. You will be geared to the things that God has prepared for them that love him. He said, because the world cannot receive it. Religion today, the churches can't receive what Jesus is giving out. You're not going to find Jesus at the churches. You're going to find Jesus by applying your mind and your heart towards heaven through the name of Jesus, through the act of God to bring us salvation, amen, for our souls. Because it seeth him not. The world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but you know him. Because you're seeking him. You know him because you could feel his spirit. He's not going to leave you hanging. If you raise your arms in truth and honesty to God, he will bless you. He, you, you'll feel those little goosebumps, as people call them. You'll feel the touch of God. He's here right now. All you have to do, he sees that never far away from any one of us at any time. At the mention of his name, at the mention of his name, you can reach him this morning. And he said, oh, don't, 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 don't go to prayer rooms. Don't, don't go to big prayer meetings. You know, they, they love to be seen of men. You'll, you'll, you'll find in some of these conferences, and I've said this before, and I don't want to get off on anything here. I want to stay with the, the message. But, but you'll find those people pace it back and forth. They're in a can cycle. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Bless the church. Bless this. Bless that. You'll hear them. And if you'll just pause for a minute, because maybe you're not getting to God anyhow with all that anyhow. Maybe you can, but you've got to shut them out. But if you're not, you'll, you'll see that they're just a canned prayer over and over again, pacing back and forth with loud voice. They're there for men. They're there. They're, their job, they want to, to spur other people. And, and, and it's all about them and about the, 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 it, creating an environment to, to, to come to that church. And, and a lot of you say, well, you know, I think maybe you're a little bit hard on them. No, I'm not hard on them. I've been there. I walked into the church when I was 18 years old. And off and on throughout my life, there's been one organization that I have went to. And that's the UPC. And, and many of you know that they, they claim to have it all. And again, I'm not getting off the subject here. If you love me, keep my commandments. All right? So I want to go to John 14, and let's start here at 15. And uh, let me see if I can get this a little bigger for you. And hopefully you can read it, read along with me here. Um, and I'll be looking up at this. Before we get into scripture, I, I, I know some of you may not be on uh, follow the, the things, but I, if I may, just just um, bear with me for a second. And, and I think this might be a good good place to put this, but I had made a, a writing and it says a psychological feel-good drug exposed. And I'm just going to read this to you and you take what you will of it. So I watched these groups show church services of many youth having a display of worship, and at first impression, you want to rejoice and thank God they are really getting it. 
The reality is that the preachers, teachers, and leadership has crafted this to spur on outward worship. Now, before you have an issue with this exposure, perhaps you should speak to people who were raised in the church and many, many, many do not even attend church anymore. The whole church condemnation, we can address at a later time. But what they will tell you and will tell, have told is, is they never were taught a depth of love for Jesus. They were never taught to love Jesus. But they, you know how people say, you know, you're, we, we just love the game. Well, that's, that's kind of what it is. They teach you the game. They don't teach you the subject. They don't teach Jesus. They teach you the game. They teach you religion, okay? And, and, and it, it, it's all based on feel-good emotions, outward, just like Jesus says, Matthew 23. You should read that every day, and you can see it, it, lights will start coming on if you, if you have been in church. These church leaders have designed this whole process around an attendance and failure to serve Jesus. So you feel the need to go back to repent before man at a fake altar of sacrifice and forgiveness before man in leadership. This in itself, once again, brings emotion back into a service for the goers to feed off and feel like they're doing a good job by being there in support. Now, these folks are never getting taught the fundamentals about really serving Jesus, but rather an organizational, hierarchical mess of lies. The heavy burdens placed on youth in these institutions is ridiculous and not realistic or Jesus taught power. It is a super hype, as the street saying would be, on crack. 2 Timothy 3 and 7, always learning and never able to arrive at the knowledge of the truth. And we're talking about truth here this morning in our first verse here. Jesus said his yoke was easy and his burden was light, meaning it's very livable, it's very doable, and you will not experience failure with his plan. So when we start teaching our children Jesus and not church, then they will not be all jacked up on emotions and failure. Remember, Jesus brought life and more abundantly. It's up to you as parents to help your children navigate this and not allow some crack candy handing out organization to keep them emotionally impaired. Listen to those words. That's exactly what we have running around right now. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Oh, I wish we could have a service like last Friday. Oh, I wish we could do this. Wish we could. We, Folks, you live constantly for Jesus. Your worship is a daily constant state of mentality. That's the true worshipers. That's what God is looking for. Jesus told us God's looking for true worshipers, but he also said it wouldn't be a place, but a continual state. And again, I reference a woman at the well. So go drug free in Jesus. All right. Again, let's, let's, let's read this word this morning. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. Uh, Holy Ghost for you King James Bible readers. Um, and uh, just just a quick mention, um, we if you've been listening to our videos, you know that 1611 was when King James Version was published. Uh, the, the codexes were not available or not given to these interpreters and writers to formulate King James Version, or maybe they didn't want to. I don't know. I was not there. But we know that, um, that the, the notes of the original manuscripts are not in the King James Version. Um, it, speaking in particular, uh, Mark 16, 9 through 20 is there in the King James Version. And all, all other um, current Bibles, or I say uh, later translations that did have uh, access to the codexes uh, are going to tell you that 9 through 20 was not in the original manuscripts. They were added. They didn't like the ending, so they figured they would draw from uh, Matthew or one of the other Gospels and just add their own ending in there. 
And uh, so that's that's what you've got in the King James Version. So here we are. We are reading out of the ESV uh, version. Uh, I find it favorable. Uh, it's a little more uh, up-to-date uh, wording and uh, doesn't change things. So anyhow, if you love me, Jesus said in John 14 and 15, and this is what we were talking about, that perfect law of liberty. Okay, If you love me, keep my commandments. 16, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. Hmm. So Jesus, speaking here in the flesh, is going to relay, okay? And we know that by reading the Bible, that the Holy Ghost, the Bible said, has not yet come because Jesus had not died and, and risen, okay? Um we also talked about when Jesus was in the room um, after his ascension and he came back to speak to them, he told his apostles, receive ye the Holy Ghost. So by the reading of the Bible, Acts 1 and 8, he said you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And, and when you look at the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one room in one uh, place, and the Holy Ghost fell. And he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait, right? Uh, however, when he came back in spirit form, uh, I think it was John, James, and Peter maybe, um, he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Well, that to me in the reading of the scripture is the first that anyone got the Holy Ghost. So there you have it by words of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. Now the writer didn't go on to say, oh, they spoke in tongues, they did all this stuff. The writer didn't say any of that. Jesus said, receive the Holy Ghost. And I cannot believe that they did not receive the Holy Ghost. So there you have it. That's where it is. And you can look that up. And he said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. What does he mean? Well, I'm here. I'm going to go. I'm your helper here in the flesh. But when I go, you're going to receive a helper. Okay? And he said, went on. He said, to be with you forever. He said, oh, you lost the Holy Ghost. You lost the Spirit of God. You don't lose the Holy Ghost. When God marks you, you're his. If he has called you, he is faithful and just to deliver you. He does not play take backs. You're not backslid no matter what your church or what that pastor or what anybody else is saying. If God has put his thumb on you, if God has said you're selected, if God has called you, you are his. You are his forever to be with you forever. So if you have any backslidden friends, I'll just take that term loosely because that's what the church, that's what religion tells you you are. Give them the good news. Let them know, hey, listen here, you're still God's no matter what. It doesn't matter what you're doing, what, what that church has led you to do. And why do I say that? Because what they do is tell you you're gonna go back into sin. And these people, I myself, have said this and believed this, that you can't live for God if you don't go to church. If you're not part of us, you're, the devil's just going to eat you up. We're your protection. The church is your protection. You got to be here. You got to be a part of this. Or you're going to be backslidden. We won't talk to you no more. You become not God's anymore. Not God's as in not being a God, but as in God's children. You won't be his. And now they'll pull up scriptures that, that has no meaning to you as being a selected Christian or a selected person God selected, as we're talking here. And he said... The helper will be with you forever, even 
the spirit of what? Truth. What is truth? Oh, well, we got 45,000. I, I find this unbelievable, but that, that's what they claim. There's 45,000 variations of religion today. I can't comprehend that number. Uh, if I had to read them all, I, I don't know if I'd make it through them all. But that's what they claim. And so that's why I say it. You can look it up. And he said, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You see, when you have the filters of a religion, of a church, you, you, you can't see Jesus. You know why? Because they hide Jesus. They hide him with all these burdens and man's traditions. They hide Jesus. They don't want you to know Jesus because you will have liberty. They are not about liberty. They're about rules. They're about you cannot do this. If you don't wear certain, defined by them, godly apparel, I think most of us have common sense. We're not going to go out there and show our stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. We, I, I, and I just, I just say this. I, I watch a lot of foreign, you know, people walk around with cameras because I'm never going to go to these countries, and, and and I like to just see how other people live and stuff. So they have these walking tours of of these different countries and good and bad, whatever. And 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 I'll, I'll watch those and I'll, I'll see the people like Cuba. I'll see the people walking by, and I told my wife, I said, you know what? One would think that the women wouldn't have bras. They would be like, you know, all not modest at all. I said, you know what's amazing to me? All these videos we watch, the young girls, the older women, they all have their self-covered. They're, they're not like a harlot, as, as, as some would say. They're, they're not, you know, down at the red light district. They're, they're literally dressed fairly modest and uh they have tank tops of course yeah showing their arms Woo -hoo. yeah well those things aren't allowed in some of these churches right so anyhow when you look at that the constraints remember this and and let's go on um yet a little while and the world will see me no more jesus is letting them know that i'm, I'm about to leave i'm about to go be transformed and and die for you um, and, and to open up that, that veil in the, in the tabernacle, uh, split that curtain in half, and, and no longer will it just be a few select men that will be able to come boldly to the throne of grace. But you and I will be able to come boldly to the throne of grace in the, for help in the time of need. So anyhow, let's move on. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. This is the promise Jesus said. Now, if you're in religion, you're never going to get this promise because they don't want you to have that promise. And if they get you to that promise and you were to receive that promise, they flock in, they put you through some, some little seminar, three-day, four-day class, once a week, keep you coming. Here, here, the, here the machine starts. You can hear it cranking up. Here comes the machine. Here comes the welcoming committee. Here comes the gifts. Here comes the showers of gifts. You, you've done great. You're here. Uh, God, has, God has accepted you. We're going to accept you. Now, here's what you need to do. Oh, put your Bible away. We, we've, we've, got our own, we've got our own documents and stuff like that. We're going we're gonna to show you some videos of the church and, and, and how important the pastor is and, and how you, to, to, to get along here and, and to, to get up this hierarchical ladder, this corporate ladder, you're going to need to do these things. Oh, by the way, do you have any special gifts? Do you have any special talents that the church could use? Because we 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 want to we want to grow those things and use them for the Lord. That's that's what you're going to hear. I've been there. 
Um, we've done it. It's been done to me. All right, so let's move on. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you yet a little while and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I never leave when, you, when I select you. I never leave. Okay? But you'll see me because I live. You also will live. You know what living is? You ever see someone say, oh man, this is really living. Means that they're having a good time. Now, how many Christians out there steeped in church and religious tradition look like they're having a good time? Oh, they're going to highlight the reels, right? They're going to highlight the reels where, oh, look, here's worship, and, and we, we've kind of uh, give, give some of that uh, um, stuff there showing that. Um, they're they're going to highlight. Oh, look at the fun! Look at the oh, look at the freedom and all this stuff. They're going to they're going to pop in those images and and those videos when when times are going good, and that's all you're going to see. How many videos do you have out there where the pastor is is preaching against his own congregation, scolding them, belittling them? And telling them, oh, the cameras are off. It ain't streaming that night. Church meetings, oh, if you ain't paying tithes, you ain't voting. Yeah, that's, 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 that's right now. That's happening today. Yeah. It, Jesus didn't say, if you love me, keep man's commandments. As a matter of fact, when that subject came up about the taxes... Jesus placed so much value on the coin, the money, that he pulled it out of a fish. Oh, Peter, go, go over there and, and get, get the coin out of the fish's mouth. Peter gets it and the disciples say, well, well Lord, what, what, who, do we, who do we serve? You or government? They said, Who's, whose inscription is on that coin? He said, Caesar's. He goes, well, you give unto Caesar that which is required by Caesar but you give to God what's required by God. So if they are a tie, who do we give to? God. God is the perfect law of liberty. We are going to choose God rather than man, and that's exactly what you're doing in religion when you refuse their religion. All right, so here we are. He says, Yet a little while, the world will, not, will see me no more, but you will see me because I get live, and you also will live. In that day, you, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Wow. I am in the Father. We are the same. And what you're going to do is your mind, and that perfect law of liberty, is going to bring you into agreement with us. Okay? With both me going to the Father... And that was the flesh dying and that spirit going back from which it came back to God in the spirit. Okay. And we can talk about that a little uh, in another uh, setting. But anyhow, let's continue reading. And I and the Father, you and me, I and you, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. How would he manifest himself to you? Through his spirit, that comforter, right? That helper. Okay, here you are. And Judas Iscariot said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and will come to him and make our home with him. Okay? Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Okay? Who's not keeping his words? The scribes and Pharisees weren't keeping his words. Okay? Will keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. I'm speaking through the flesh as God. That is exactly what he's saying here. 
25, these things I have spoken to you while I am yet still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus, he will teach you all things, just, just pieces, and then I'll leave it to some pastor or some church religion to kind of pick up from there. Or he'll, he'll leave it to the disciples. He'll, he'll, oh, well, through Peter, and then through someone he selects, and then someone who he selects. Well, there's your Catholic church there. That's what they believe, okay? But that's not what the Word says. That's not what Jesus said. Who the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace. Peace. What does Jesus bring to you? Peace. I cannot tell you the amount of times while in religion that I did not have peace. That I was always worried about Am I doing right? Is the pastor going to be happy with this? You know, uh, I'm a teacher, Sunday school teacher. I'm the superintendent. Uh, I preach now. Uh, I'm, I'm youth youth director, leader, whatever you call it, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, am I am I holding up to what this pastor wants? And and back in the day, the pastor required you if you were working. Uh, in any part of the ministry, you were you, you were going to have sleeves on your shirts, come down to your wrist. You're not going to pull them up. You're not going to show your arms because that wasn't holy. And that was his rules. And that's what he required of you. And if you were going to not do that, you would not have part in the service of the church. Okay? So... Those are the things, those are those heavy burdens, those traditions of man and their twisted ways of, of interjecting a commandment that God had never even put forth. All right, so here we go. Bring to your members whatsoever I said, verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace, not the peace of a pastor. Oh, I did everything he wants. Oh, I'm in good cahoots with this man. I'm in good cahoots with, with the board of the church. I'm, I'm doing everything that they said that I, I need to do to, to keep going and be happy and my family to be privileged. Yeah, that's, that's the real thing there. Anyhow, um, and, and my peace I leave, I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. This is not the same. It's not the same. This perfect law of liberty that we're talking about this morning is not some religious, fictitious, man-driven, board-driven, organization-driven liberty, false liberty, okay? That's not what Jesus is talking about, all right? So what do you say? Peace that I give, not as the world gives to you, I give to you. Let not your hearts, here is a beautiful, be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Don't be troubled. See, when you're, when you're fulfilling that perfect law of liberty, where you do as you please, and you please God because you love Jesus. You keep his commandments because that is what makes you free. That is what makes you happy. All right, we're going to wrap this up. He said, not as the world gives, let not your heart be troubled. Let it not be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I in spirit. And now I have told you before it takes place. So that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. And I could have pretty much uh, made this title today, Rise, let us go from here. And perhaps I will sometime. But that's where we're at today, folks. If you want the perfect law of liberty... And, and, and again, I say, 
when you go down here and you go to Matthew 23, the scribes and Pharisees that sit in Moses' seat. So do and observe what they tell you. What is he saying? Not what they tell you in, in, in of their traditions, but what they tell you, what they're reading of the law of Moses. The Pentateuch. Okay, those first five books. Just just obey them because they were still under the law until Jesus' death. And so he said, but don't do the works they do. Don't be like them. For they preach, but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They don't do it themselves. They do all their deeds to be seen of others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love the place of honor at feast and the best seats in the synagogues. That's what they do. And if you've ever had any church dinners, they'll have this offset room and have just the pastors, the preachers. They love to elevate. They love to separate. See, you're 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 the little old people, and then there's an elevation. That's why there's platforms. That's why they get the powered speakers. Because, see, they're better than you. And that's exactly what it depicts. Right there. They do all their deeds to be seen of others. And in the marketplaces, being called rabbi by, other, by others. But you are not to be called rabbi. For you have one, one teacher. And you are all brothers. No big eyes, no little U's. All one in the kingdom, in God's eyes. You are all one. And call no man your father on earth, for there you only have one father who is in heaven. But we have a whole religion and breeds from that religion that address their priest as father. I'm sure that's not a direct contradiction, is it? Mm. Simple stuff here. And here we go. Neither be called instructors, teachers, for you have one instructor, that's Christ. One, one. But many of you today are under the burden and the, and the, and the grips and domination of a pastor, a church board, a church organization. They call them bylaws. Bylaws. This is the bylaws of the church. This is the rules that we have added for your membership to be valid. For you to be in good standing. Good standing. Oh, yes, yes. Let me write a letter. A letter. You're going to transfer church to church. Oh, they're in good standing. Yes, good standing with Faith uh, Benefit Church um, for for every, anybody but Jesus. That's that. Yeah, here sign signed uh, Antichrist. That's what you get, folks. Don't you dare call and inquire about another church. Oh, this just happened to me a couple of years ago. I was trying to because of the area we were doing some fundraising and and and. Uh, outreach for a charity, I was calling another church to see if they, because they were in the area, wanted to kind of be a part of that to outreach for people here that lived by their church. And lo and behold, did I find out this pastor called the church pastor where I was going, said, hey, yeah, I think this guy's looking for another church. And of course, this pastor knew what I was doing and says, ah, no, 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 no. He's he's uh he's doing a work for X Y Z blah blah blah. And yeah, no, no, he's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> they own you. They own you. Do you not see this? They own you. This is their mentality. Oh, I could I could I could tell you so many things, but you know. 
I'm I'm the bearer of all this this uh oh I'm against the church and all this. I am against your false teaching. I'm against your antichrist teaching. And I will proclaim it, I will expose it as God lays it on my heart to do so. See, you you're you're just going to you're just going to walk in and see the worship and all the friendliness and highs and this this is this is part of the appeal that they want you to look at. But in those back rooms and that, that get the leadership together and then get the inner circle together because Jesus had an inner, inner circle, right? Well, we're just following Jesus. He had 12. Yeah, he, he spoke to them, right? Yeah, they think they're Jesus. They think they are God. They're not God. Jesus never said, you do that. And he surely wasn't meaning do as I do for you to do those things because you're not Jesus and you're not dying for anyone. Matter of fact, you're taking from people. So when you look at that stuff, these people will, will bring their inner circles together and they will straight up say, you know, we've got to make people want to come to church. What can we do? What gimmicks can we try next? What will be our ROI, return on investment? What would be the best investment? What if we did a candy grab giveaway? Oh, no, you're just going to get a lot of parents dropping their kids off and they'll never come. Okay, let's do something else. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, this is, this is those, that's the sausage making, as they say, folks. That's the real sausage making. Again, I'm not going to go into it. I'm going to end here. Uh, we've, we've been on for a little while, and I'm just going to say thank you for, for sharing your time uh, with, this, with me today and, and visiting. I, I love you, and I just want you to be realistic. Engage in that perfect law of liberty that only Jesus gives. This is what we what Jesus is about. And religion will pull you away from all of that. So anyhow, go in peace. Let's pray for one another. Uh, let's, let's lift one another up. And uh, if, if you see someone in need, don't shut down the, the passion that God has given you. So anyhow, love everyone. And again, I thank you for...